You know the food is good when the service is bad. Singaporeans don't mind bad attitude when food is worth it. Today I sent Gary to check out some stalls with the most infamous service reputations but serve amazing food. Will he feel their wrath or perhaps the online reviews are exaggerated? Let's find out. Hello and welcome back to episode two of uh, Walt Food Finders, Seth Louis Food Finders. I'm here today because Seth has actually asked or found a bunch of places that have notoriously bad service, supposedly, but very good food. So I'm gonna go try them out and see what's what and uh, if I agree or disagree with uh, these uh, online remarks. So Gary, how do you feel about the general service level in Singapore for hawker food? It's neither here nor there. I think most aunties and uncles are fairly kind, but generally I don't expect uh, amazing service. They're, they're more about efficiency and getting the orders to you and getting you out. Get out! Why do you think in general the service in Singapore is not as good uh, versus other countries? Because I think the culture doesn't necessarily advocate for it. It's not seen locally as a big issue, I feel. It only becomes an issue if you've experienced other stuff. It's more about business, more about getting you the right food at the proper value and keeping the price low, and therefore service takes a little bit of a hit. Now, let's go try out some of these foods and I'll show you. All right, I'm just about to go order a Waki Big Prawn Noodle Soup. They opened in 1951, before the Hawker Centers were even established, and this place has been serving their prawn noodles for 70 years. However, these are the one-star reviews we found on Google. Number one, from uh, Jeremiah Xavier. Oh, the service attitude of the auntie is breaking bad. Only can order the $25 for good attitude. If not, she will say you're poor. Horrible service, not even the food can save it. Big words, Xavier. This is the place to be if you like to get scolded for no reason. This woman is undoubtedly the most rude human being I've ever seen in my life. She will only kowtow and smile at you if you are ang mo or if you order the most expensive item. I am gonna go try and order the $5 prawn noodle. Try to order in a Singaporean accent. And the you still open? Yes. Can I try your five dollar option? Sorry, it's five dollars. No option to try. Okay. Ah. <laughs> five dollar then. Five dollars, no more. No more. All oh, finished already. Yeah, price finished. Okay. Oh. Now I'm the price is thirty dollars, twenty five dollars, and ten dollars. Okay, I do the ten dollar one first. You want the option one? Is the good one? Is at least you take the twenty dollars. What's What's the twenty dollar bowl give me? Because we immediately cook the front for you. Ah. With the ten dollars one, the time is no option. Just the worst we want the head. Oh, you don't get the full head with the ten. Ah, ah. if you think that twenty dollars onwards, you get the full price for it. She's not selling me, guys. <laughs> the ten dollar one, the prawn is small, is it? Only size prawn. Don't have the whole prawn. All right, you sold me, Auntie. Let's try the twenty dollar one then. But my friends say the soup is very good. Right? I know. This one already got one more soup already. And then here also soup. Oh, you mean buy the dry and then you give me soup also? Uh? I try what, what you recommend then. Okay. Give me $20. So we take a seat first later, you come and collect, okay? Okay. She upsold me the $20. Cut, wait, what? what? It was really hard to order the $5 or what, the $10. What do, you, what do you mean hard to order? Like she literally wouldn't let you order it. $10 more? Dollars. And, and then, okay. <laughs> buy the final one. And then the kick is, you want dry or you want soup? I was like, I want soup. But actually you should try the dry one. <laughs> yes, like dictator what you should get. She's like, you should try the dry one. You know why? Because I will make the dry one for you and I will give you the soup on the side. So you can try the dry one and then you can try the soup on the side too. She wasn't necessarily mean to me about it, but she wouldn't just take my order, which was hilarious. Blam. Okay, so I got my food. Honestly, I tried ordering the $5 bowl. She said it was sold out, which I don't really believe her. And I didn't really want to argue with her too much. She basically pushed you towards the most expensive bowl. According to her, the better experience because you get the really, really big prawns. Let's try this soup because apparently it's very good. Mmm, okay. Very brothy and prawny. The noodles. Very good, lots of flavor. Very oily, so there's a lot of the lard and the spices and everything. I'd say definitely a cut above 
the normal prawn noodles I've had. The soup is also very good. Sweet, not very spicy. I think overall, really good. I do feel the whole oversell is a bit much. She could definitely tone that down, but she did explain to me the only price difference between the $5 and $10 versions is literally the size of the prawn. For the $20 version, three sizable prawns with the head and everything still attached. However, for a cheap option, you're gonna get the flavor of the good soup and the noodles. You can ask for the dry version, she'll give you both, but she might not be very happy about you ordering that. The prawn is big, it's juicy, it's got all the typical things you want in a really fresh prawn. But you see this like little red line thing? It's like all, all the prawn row. She cuts open the head, cooks it in the soup, so you get that additional prawniness. I feel she's a type of character that if you've been in Singapore long enough, if you understand this type of person, this old generation, they show love and affection in a kind of mean way. So I didn't find her to be rude necessarily, I just found her to be very pushy with her sales which I was kind of like, you know what, Seth Louis is paying for this anyway, so might as well get me the $20 one, so I'm okay with that. Question for all of you out there, has anyone ordered the $5 noodle from Waki and successfully got it? I'm really curious to know because it, I found it really difficult. How'd you do it? Okay, we're gonna go ask Auntie if we can uh, film some B-roll. We'll see how this goes. Auntie, hey my friend, Wondering if they can shoot some of you making the pond noodle can or not. All right, we're here at the second location, Holland Village XO Fishhead Bihun Soup. Let's go over some of the online uh, remarks from Joyce Hui, extremely rude man and lady who took orders. I have been eating this place all my life and I must say the uncle and his worker has the worst attitude. From what I know, it's a uh, husband and wife. They've been doing this for quite a while. As far as I can see, there's a lot of people that still do kind of order from here. Let's find out if the food is good and if the service is as bad as everyone sees. Seems. I think uncle's already kind of giving me the stink eye, so we'll see what happens. Uncle, hi, can I order the XO Bihun? XO Bihun. How are you just me, I'm trying out for one yeah, one person only. Thank yeah. you. Uh, just here. Okay? Okay, okay. All right, thank you. Uncle must be in a good mood. He seemed nice to me. Or he's just staring at the two cameras, mm. just like, oh shit, better be nice. Uncle, they say you have a special liquid chili sauce. Is that true? No chili sauce. Chili, chili. Only this chili, uh, ah. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Ah. Thank you. Ah. I don't know what y'all talking about. It was really nice to me. My first impressions, if you see the bowl, was pretty unimpressive. I mean, I only saw noodles and soup. Presentation-wise, was a solid two thumbs down. But I do feel like the uncle or the stop has a I give no f**ks kind of attitude towards this because after I did pull the stuff out, I'm finding very generous pieces of fish. I personally didn't find him to be too difficult when I was ordering. He was quite nice actually. He, but again, I do feel he's the type of person that doesn't take a lot of shit. So if you come here with a sour attitude, he might give you a sour attitude back. I was trying to be quite pleasant. So I got pleasantries back. Let's try, I dig in. Give me some, give me some. Seems like quite a lot. It's a good portion size. The fish looks good too. Okay, okay. I think it's really good, actually. For $8, I think the portion size is reasonable, if not on the heavier side. The chunks of fish are generous. I don't know if they're store-bought or what, but I even see that there's some self grill marks like so it's fresh tastes really good there could be a bit more exo flavor but for eight dollars i don't think you're gonna be getting that it's not a very punchy punchy flavor it's a very delicate smooth light flavor with a little bit of that exo alcohol at the end i think generally overall it's a great dish for eight bucks now i'd be curious to know if i ordered like the 20 to 30 dollar option like would they put more exo in it because i think that would help elevate it even more overall I feel like I got a very different experience than what I read on the comment section, but I do give the overall portion size and cost and overall quality of the food like two thumbs up. That's a solid lunch with lots of fish. Uncle, can I ask you some few questions? 
We thought you are like too tough. Yeah, I'm morning. Yeah, you're going to fucking wow. Hey, okay, okay. I, I can't. Too much to you, Bo Bay. Today, today, me here. Much, much, much later. He's not a Tuta store. He specializes in XO fish soup. He has some side dishes like our vegetables, but he's ultimately not a Tuta place. So a lot of people confuse that and then he just puts it up there because the newspaper, I think, told him that it's better to clear it up with everyone that you're not a Tuta store because a lot of people keep asking. And then he gets complained about because he just tells people that he doesn't serve that. And for whatever reason, people are like angry that he doesn't serve what he doesn't serve. To me personally, Uncle seems really nice. If he doesn't sell fried rice, he doesn't sell fried rice. Go to a fried rice store. That's my two take on that. I like that guy. Okay, so we're here at the last spot, Fee's Cafe over here in Lucky Plaza. This place sells chicken rice and apparently it's very good chicken rice. But before we go and try it, let's read some of the online reviews here. From uh, A.A. Ron, it is even worse than eating in the army camp as they still treat you with respect. I mean, if you do enjoy allowing them to treat customers like trash, you can continue to go ahead and uh, dine here. Seems like the owner still hasn't changed his bad attitude, very rude, even after a few years of very poor customer service. Even an ex-convict has better manners than him. Harsh words. I do have a very funny quote here from the owner, Shafi. To be honest, it's cause some people are idiots. There are some very entitled customers out there. If they want service, go to Jollibee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as far as I can see, it smells good and they don't have a lot of seats. Clearly very popular. I'm gonna order one, try to grab a seat if I can and see what this experience is all like. It smells good though, so. Oh, video that, video that. He's like asking. I just wanna try the food. But you're already putting myself on Yeah. Ask. No, no, so that's, that's exactly what we wanna do is just like try to discover for ourselves. Is that okay? Oh, is that okay? You already record, can I say no? You can delete lah. You can delete. <laughs> if you want. Yes, I just asked Okay, cool. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right, so he clearly saw us filming some stuff and he asked me like, what's going on? Because obviously we didn't really ask him to film. Just a quick chat. He was just like, you know, out of a little bit more respect, asks next time, which I then replied like, you know, is it okay that we film? And he's like, you know what, fine. Can he stop us? Because we already recorded, which it's a no. I mean, we could delete it, but he was actually quite okay with it. Not the friendliest, but I didn't find it rude. It was more like asking for mutual respect, which is understandable. Can I get the combo, the burger deal, and the quail egg? We are outside for the time, you Okay, okay, okay. So basically, if you come here and there's no seats, take the order, put it on the side for you, and then once a seat opens up, they will let you know when a seat opens, and then these people are all kind of waiting to dine in. So finally sat down, got my food. Let's go over the kind of ordering and the experience so far. As busy as it is, I think he's just really good at table management. Could he be a bit nicer about certain things? Yes. Was he actively trying to be mean or rude? No. I think he was being very practical about it. Probably as a business owner, you want to get maximum seats in, asses on seats, food on tables. That's ultimately what he's doing. So I realized once I ordered, he sent me off to the side. Once the table opened up, he knew to give me exactly the seat we needed, which is right on the corner here so that we can still do this thing, which I actually think that's actually quite nice of him to do it. All right, so I ordered the combo set, which is the fried chicken specifically asked for the thigh. This is called the bugadil, which is like a potato fritter. So the combo comes with two sides, the chicken, rice, and a soup. The chicken is like really nicely fried, very crispy on the outside, very juicy on the inside. The flavors are prominent. It's one of the better fried chickens I've had, but the skin, I don't know what kind of batter they're using, but it's more flavorful than most places I've been to. I got that. Mm. Oh, good. Yeah. Really good. The skin is exceptionally crunchy, flavorful, and the meat is very, very soft. All the things you want when getting a dish like this. It's not just plain white rice, but I don't know if it's coconut either. It's like fragranted rice. Yeah, yeah. It's not coconut, like nasi lama. Do you it, know what it is? Chicken stock. Is it just chicken stock? It, it tastes like chicken rice. I actually really like the way it's cooked. It's not like clumped up together. It's soft. 
quail eggs is a bit more soury. I don't know if there's a specific typical way they do that, but there's a big difference between the different spices here, which I quite like. Overall, as an entire dish, it is great value for the money. The fried chicken really stands out to me. If you look behind me, that line has not stopped. So I can kind of understand that business is actually good. The quality of everything's actually really good and the price is fair. I don't think you're gonna be coming here for the service anyways. Like I think most patrons here, they're here for the food. They wanna get it quick, reasonable price. So do you think the owner was kind of stern? Could he be friendlier? I think of course he could put on a smile, be nicer about it and things like that. However, actually conversing with him a little bit, I just don't think he is of that character. So kind of asking someone to be someone that they're not is generally also not very genuine. Who cares if he's a bit stern? You're gonna get the good food, take it and go. So that's it for episode two. So we tried all these places that were notorious for not the best service, but exceptionally good food. Are they right? Yes. Food was pretty good overall, service was not amazing. But I wanna break down kind of very quickly how I felt about each individual stall. The first stall, I felt Auntie was on the really old side. So even if she could keep up with the demand, she probably wouldn't be able to physically make like a hundred bowls a day. So I did feel that she attempted to upsell me more so that by selling me one $20 bowl, she makes more profit margin and she seemed more proud of the more expensive big prawn bowl that she was serving. Second place, I didn't feel any meanness from that uncle. I thought he was actually quite nice. There's a lot of misunderstanding between his stall, what he serves and what people want. In summary, he's not at the top place. He's literally a fish head XO noodle place. And then the last place over here, food is really great. I do feel he's doing a good job with like the table management. Could he be nicer? Yes. Is the feedback valid? Also yes. But at the same time, I feel some of the attitude that he has is really warranted. Generally, I think all the food is actually really good. So if you just go in, get the food, eat and leave, I think you'll find that these places are exceptionally good. Uh, do you think the customer is always right? Personally, no. I don't think customers are always right. I think if you serve something that you want to be proud of, sometimes I feel customers can be stupid and they don't know what is good. If you think about like Steve Jobs, he'll tell you like customers don't even know what they don't know. So if you're really good at what you do, you basically set the standards of what is good. Really curious to think what you guys think of my opinions on these stores. Is it something I'm missing about Singapore and its culture or something like that that I'm not quite getting? Let me know in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, like and subscribe. I hope to see you in the next uh, episode and I hope you don't see Seth Louis in Straits Times anymore, at least not in a bad way. Okay, see you next time. Tell us how you feel about service levels in Singapore. <laughs> Uh, well, okay, the service in Singapore is 